Welcome to the Bio Balance HealthCast, episode number 424. What exercise do you need to do in order to be healthy? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. This week, we want to talk about some information that we've gotten recently from a, a, an AMA journal article about exercise, and they've, they've evaluated a lot of different things that you're constantly bombarded in the media about different exercise programs, exercise recommendations, messages of how you ought to do it. So we thought we'd spend some time talking about these three things. What types of exercise are there that people do, should do, could do? Uh, how much of that do you need to do? And what exactly are the benefits from doing those types of exercises? Like if you, if you want to make a distinction between cardio which is uh, exercise that you do to improve the quality of your heart functions and reduce the likelihood that you will have a stroke or heart attack. So a lot of people try to exercise mm -hmm. to protect their heart. Uh, then there's another type called resistance, which is when you exercise using uh, weights of some sort or resistance of uh, rubber bands mass mm -hmm. so that you have to exercise energy and effort against that resistance to achieve a goal. Mm -hmm. And so, so I, mean, I have a, a young friend who's 22 years old, recently sent me a video of him deadlifting 400 pounds. Why he wants to do that, uh, I haven't had a chance to have a discussion with him about, but he's, he, he's really focused on that. It's a big part of his life. He does a lot of that kind of lifting. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what his goals are for that, what the payoff is supposed to be. I mean, there is a payoff to in get being bigger. able to say... He doesn't seem to be, he's been doing this for several years and he's big, but he's mm -hmm. not massive. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he's trying to get massive. I mean, he eats weird things. He takes <laughs> protein drinks and protein powders multiple times a day. And he lifts weights a couple of hours every day. Well, you're talking about people under 40, young yes, people who are, and, yeah. and extremes. So, but today we're going to talk about people over 40 and over, people over 40 should not be extreme. That is not what our bodies were made for when we are past our, I guess I would call prime. it our prime. <laughs> I'm beyond my prime. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or our... our um, my used by date is... Well, part of it is that you, you, when you're young, it's like you're always taking money out of the bank. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you've run out of money at 40. And, you know, then the same things you did when you were 35 at 45 hurt you. <laughs> I mean, if you did a triathlon before 40, oftentimes you'll be injured in the triathlon after 45. Not always, and wow. I don't want to hear from every triathlete that that's not true. I mean, it's a, it's a very unusual person that can still run marathons and run and do triathlons after 50. Yeah. So that's that's a, those are super athletes. And they have to live a really disciplined, aggressive lifestyles where right. they focus just on this as the main thing that they do. That's their main interest. But but we want to talk to you. Yeah, what about ordinary? Everybody, the normal normal people. And so we um we just we recently went over our workout routines. We we work out, do resistance training uh twice a week with a trainer, and that's Brett, my husband and I all together do resistance training with one trainer. And she has us watching uh, our weight on the in-body machine, just like what we have at our office. And so for, for our progress report, for doing these different exercises with different muscle groups, and another thing that resistance training does is it isolates muscle groups. So you're doing one part of the arm muscles, you're doing the biceps, then you're doing the triceps. And, you know, so you're actually isolating certain muscles and repetitively using uh, weights against that that muscle to make it stronger, bigger. Well, and she pays particular attention to our form as right. we do it because the form directs 
which muscle groups respond. And also if you don't, that you don't get hurt. If you don't do it correctly and you don't get hurt. So uh, the trainers, that's her job. Her job is to make sure we don't get hurt, to make sure we get the most out of our exercises. Mm -hmm. So since she started being our trainer, which was only a few months ago, um, I've worked out for 31 years at this particular place called Fitness Edge. That is a training, it's a training center. And you work out only with physical or, or uh, with uh, certified. Uh, train, certified trainers. Uh, but but since October, so two months, I, I lost a total of three pounds, which doesn't sound a lot like a lot. But I'm at now at my ideal weight, but I gained two pounds of muscle at the time over that time. So that means five pounds of fat went away, and I'm only 5'3". So I, on somebody who's 5'3", that's a lot of fat to go away in two months. But that's what I did with exercise. I wasn't particularly dieting, but I wasn't eating crazy either. So... To me, I went down one dress size. I mean, I have to like. Well, maybe we should talk about what alter that. <laughs> the, the in body machine is compared okay. to a scale. If you right. get on a scale, it tells you your weight. And that's just gravity, basically. And if you get on an in body, it it sends uh, electromagnetic. electronic pulses through different parts of your body. You hold with your hands and you stand on your feet on sensors, and it can measure your muscle mass, your fat mass. Your hydration, how much mm -hmm. water is intercellular and intracellular. Mm -hmm. And then you get a little readouts that, and, and it measures like your left arm is bigger than your right arm mm -hmm. by so many millimeters or heavier. Mm -hmm. uh, your right leg, your left leg, your abdomen, it, it segments your body and you get readouts to say, where are your issues? And where's my muscle? Where's my fat? Mm -hmm. It tells you all of that. And then you can then do it. Once a month, every two months, but we did it at a two-month interval, and this is what we found in two months of exercising just two days a week mm -hmm. with a trainer, which is more productive than just exercising on your own, yeah. believe it or not, unless you are a trainer. But that, that was my progress. My husband says he's been working out for 20 years, but mm. anyway, he's been working out with this trainer for two months, and during that time, he lost seven pounds, but he gained five pounds of muscle. So that, me that means that he uh, lost 10 pounds of fat and he lost um, two belt sizes. Wow. So he's now in pants that he kept. And I didn't ever think he'd yeah, ever get yeah, into fat, them. Fat clothes and skinny clothes in your yeah. closet because you go up and down. There's now I have those sometimes. because yeah. I, I haven't, hadn't lost weight in a while. I mean, I hadn't lost yeah. size in a while. Yeah. So now I've got Well, and sizes. one of the things that, that I'm learning as a result of the in body and the stuff that you're coordinating for me to do, you and the trainer, is that uh, there, there's a difference in what you do for where the payoff is and what part mm -hmm. of your body and what kind of things you have to pay attention to. I have not ever worked out. I mean, I've worked a lot. And you you and do a lot of aerobic, I, very fast well, walking. I didn't, I didn't know the distinction between the aerobic or the cardio exercise mm -hmm. and the resistance exercise. And about two and a half, three years ago, mm -hmm. you said to me, you're really looking old. You're starting to stoop and droop, and uh, well, you were you losing need... you were losing shoulders, and that's usually where men start to lose muscle mass. Right, and you said that in a very precise and appropriate way. What I heard was you're really getting ugly. Uh, <laughs> so you said you need to do some resistance work. Mm -hmm. the, uh, old men, especially, need to do some work to keep their shoulders back and up and and filled in so that it doesn't get which concave. means you need to build muscle there, and you're. And you're Back needs to be mm -hmm. straight, and mm -hmm. you know, like when you hopefully when you were younger, you could stand up straight and move and be flexible. Mm -hmm. And you said, "I'm worried that you're on a downward path, and you're going to lose that flexibility, and you're going to get yourself mm -hmm. in trouble medically." So I agreed to start going, and I've been going for about three years. Mm -hmm. And in that three years, I've lost 17 pounds, which is so great. and is but, mostly fat. Well, so so you. In all of our podcasts and the work that you do mm -hmm. at Biobalance Health, you talk about hormone replacements, but you make the message over and over again, we can get you in the starting gate. We can give you the best chance to get the best result if we you balance your hormones mm -hmm. and, and put your testosterone back in place. But then you have to do something. Mm -hmm. You have to eat right and you have to exercise. Mm -hmm. And so in the last three years, I've really concentrated on that. Mm -hmm. And and it's well, worked. I, I think so. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've lost 17 pounds and mm -hmm. I do have uh, somewhat, I mean, I'm not a, when I was a kid mm -hmm. back in the dark ages, every magazine and comic book that I got 
had an ad in it for Charles Atlas. Yeah. And it was you know, this young, wimpy kid, and some bully comes along and kicks sand in his face. <laughs> And Charles Atlas comes along and says, I can fix that. And so they start working out with weights mm-hmm. and he bulks up like my young friend mm-hmm. and you know, becomes massive like, like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then bullies don't bother. I've never been interested in that. I've never been attracted to that. Mm-hmm. My, my wife, mm-hmm. fortunately, isn't attracted to mm-hmm. that. She talks about those guys as no-neck guys. Yeah, well, I agree, yeah. kind of. Uh, but that's, that's because it's not normal. It's not a natural physique. Yeah. We're looking for... I mean, on the beach, you're looking for normal physiques and in general, men without a big gut. I mean, basically, that's it. You know, because that's where men usually That starts to be a problem for most men. So the ideal, if you had, if the only thing you had is that you had to think about, the ideal exercise program would be resistance training or weightlifting, but I don't mean heavy weights. I mean, what we're talking about Maybe lots of repetitions with smaller weights so you don't hurt your joints, but every other day. And then on the off days... Well, that's what our trainer says. Fewer weights, less weight, more repetitions, right. more cycles. Mm-hmm. Not just, So don't go in and try to pick up a 100-pound weight. Get a 10-pound weight mm-hmm. and, and do 10 there. repetitions or 20 mm-hmm. repetitions. And, and she does, has us do... Usually we're doing three sets of exercises mm-hmm. at a time. So mm-hmm. we'll do... 10 repetitions on this machine or in, in this stretch or whatever. She had me doing 30 on every station this time. And then we move to another one, yeah. another station mm-hmm. and do 10, and then another station do 10, and we mm-hmm. repeat that three times. Then we go somewhere else in the gym and And do a different stations. part of our body. Yeah. So that, and that's all resistance training. In general, resistance against gravity or resistance with weights or resistance with rubber bands or, or that, I mean, basically anything that you are isolating a muscle with and, and using weight or going against gravity. Right. So that's called resistance training. And everyone should do that, at least as they say in this article, they say that you should do it for two and a half hours a week. So that means we do it for two hours a week. Right. So we should add another half hour. Of resistance. Of resistance training. training. Um. And that's ideal. So and in, everyone over fifty, and I say forty, should be doing resistance training yeah. to keep their body in shape. So resistance training isolates muscle groups within segments of your body, but there are other kinds of I, I think mm-hmm. also resistance training that you talk about bone strengthening and balance strengthening exercises. Mm-hmm. So and, bone strengthening just requires that you're upright against gravity. You're not swimming. You're not lying down and doing your exercises. You're upright, so you're putting pressure on the long bones. So that helps promote bone growth. Obviously, you need hormones, estrogen, testosterone, and you need calcium, and you need um, vitamin K and vitamin C to make bone. But you also need this bone uh, type of exercise to help you build your bones. So that just means you have to be upright against gravity. Doing You could be walking. Yeah. You can be... Dancing. Well, you, you could be doing yoga. Yeah, and you may not realize that you're getting a benefit from that exercise. <coughs> we we were on vacation. Our families were vacationing together this summer, and we were taking a tour uh, of, a, of a place and walking up a mountain. And the four of us, and I'm the oldest at 71, and my wife is the youngest at 60 of the four of us. Mm-hmm. And we were climbing this mountain, and our guide drifted further and further back. And finally yelled at us, hey, you have to wait for the guide. And so we stopped and we waited. The guide huffed and puffed and got up to us and looked at us with <coughs> incredulity because we're American tourists abroad and, and said, do you guys exercise? Do you work out? Do you out? work out? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. Because they couldn't well, keep up Well, she was half our age. Yeah. So that was. That that, was it makes you feel good when it yeah. happens. Yeah. Yeah. So that meant we were doing the right things. Yeah. But I considered that both aerobics and weights because yes. we were using our body weight against gravity and right. we were going uphill and we were at a steady pace. So we were really, it was mostly our muscles. Okay. So, I mean, in our legs, excuse me. So, but aerobics is a little different. Aerobics is getting your heart rate up by doing something repetitively that uses many muscle groups together. And really it's to get your heart stronger. You were talking about that earlier. I'm yeah. sorry. I've got a frog in my throat or something, Mm -hmm. as they say. Too much exercise. (coughs) (laughs) So 
So, That's so you're saying thing. resistance exercise needs to be two to two and a half hours a week. Mm -hmm. So then you add to that aerobic exercise. You can add, or you can you can do one or the other. You don't have to do both. Okay. By their recommendation, my recommendation is you at least have to do the two and a half hours of resistance, and then you can add the aerobic too. You don't have to formally go to a gym and engage a professional trainer to help you with these things. There are things that you can do on your own. That for, for maximum optimal results, you might want to do that. But there are things that you can do. For instance, you should you should work on walking anywhere that you can walk. If you're mm -hmm. going to a building and you're, the offset you're going to is two stories up, if you can, walk two flights of stairs. Don't take the elevator. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I used to work with a psychologist friend of mine that went to the gym all the time. She, she spoke the same way that you do about the importance of regular exercise. But I would make her furious because I would tease her. She would drive her car around the parking lot for 20 minutes waiting for the closest spot so that, that she could go crazy. in the gym and exercise. Which, to me, that's crazy. Just park somewhere right. and walk in. Walking, walking is one is of the exercise. best things that you can do. Yeah, and yeah. it's something that we don't do enough of. The other thing is you have, culture. you have to yeah. move yeah. all day long. I don't care if you're at your desk. You have to get up every hour or two, walk around. Mm -hmm. If you don't move, you're not, getting, you're not getting your blood flow moving. You're not getting lymph fluid. You're going to be swollen. Your lower extremities from sitting in a chair for long periods of time. You're going to have swollen ankles. You're going to be constipated. The best way not to be constipated, like why do they have rocking chairs in old people's homes? Yeah. They don't walk much. But they rock. Yeah. Well, rocking helps your bowels to move around. Yeah. So any kind of movement of your whole body helps your bowels move better. Mm -hmm. And so that's better than taking pills. Yeah, absolutely. So they say 2.5 hours to 5 hours of moderately intensive exercise. Right. I say the 2.5 should be the, the resistance training. And then you can add up to 5 hours with the aerobics. Right. And then... <clears throat> Adults should move their bodies every several several hours all day long. Yeah. So that's a, that's very my, important. My son that's works, their recommendation. My son, who's 23, works in an office, and he has a desk that he sits at all day long to work. Mm -hmm. But the desk can stand. And so there are times during the day when he stands at his desk and he works on a computer, mm -hmm. and there are times when he sits down. But all of their desks are... Adjustable That's great. that way. And you, and it's a I very mean, modern it, company. Yeah, if, you're, if your company will do that, that would be great. It's hard for me to stand at a desk and talk to patients without them thinking I'm lecturing. Hmm. So I would have to always sit. But I get up in, the, in between appointments and right. walk around. Right. So that's... <clears throat> yeah, you have to find out what, what modification will work for where you are. I, I taught school for a number of years, and I knew a lot of school teachers that sat at their desk and conducted class. I don't think when I had students in the room, I ever sat at the desk and walking around, lecturing or guiding or teaching or what have you. But movement and uh, being erect mm -hmm. really does matter. Mm -hmm. It really does, and it really keeps you healthier than you would be if you were just sitting. So we have some more, to, we have some more information from the same study to talk about for the benefits of exercise, what, they, what exercise actually does for you mm -hmm. and your body and how it makes you healthier. So we would like to talk about that next week. So, so thank you for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.